Some people might just turn around and say it's none of your business. <laughs> but <laughs> if it's an SOS email and if I don't reply to you in two days, that means I'm dead. But how do people with different sexualities actually have sex? If you had to be a good ally to me, I would like you to uh, tell me every two minutes that I am fantastic, fabulous, I look swell. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste everyone. My name is Avanti Nagral and we have an incredibly, incredibly special guest here with us today. The artist, the diva, the one who needs no introduction. Sushant Devgekar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A.K.A. Rani Kohinoor. Exactly. A.K.A. Rani Kohinoor. And um, they are an, an incredible, incredible human being who have been fighting for acceptance and rights of the LGBTQ plus community for many, many years. Thank you so much for being here. Um, as, as we spoke about, you know, I requested our community to send in questions that they have about the LGBTQ plus community. And um, a lot of people have questions across the spectrum, no pun intended. So if you will, I would love to just start out with the first most burning one, which everybody's curious about. Could you please define what LGBTQ plus means and clarify all the terminology and nomenclature? Um, so basically LGBTQIA plus. So, you know, it started, uh, of course, with just LGBT. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, you know, that means it, when you kind of uh, expand it, it's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. And then they added QIA plus because there's so many dimensions and, uh, you know, as you said, across the spectrum, sexuality and gender is a spectrum and there's so much diversity even within diverse uh, communities, you see. So we wanted to be inclusive of anybody who doesn't identify uh, with the heteronormative, uh, uh, you know, sort of a structure that has been um, created by, by us. So Q is queer, okay, queer is an umbrella term for, uh, you know, people who identify outside of the binaries or have uh, different uh, uh, orientations that are not uh, considered mainstream, you know, which I hate this term mainstream, but you know what I mean. And there's intersex and that's the I and A stands for asexual and we've also added the A as allies. Mm -hmm. So even though you're not uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender or queer or any of the, uh, you know, dimensions of uh, within the queer community, you're also an ally and therefore you are also a very integral part of our community. Because without allies, without heterosexual allies, the community will be in a vacuum. We can't function in a vacuum in any society. So we need to function, uh, uh, you know, as a unit. Therefore, we've also included and made an effort to make sure that allies of the LGBTQIA plus community are also given their uh, rightful place, uh, you know, beside us for supporting us. And, and that's, that's a way we can sort of even thank them. So a lot of folks have asked questions like, how do I know if somebody is queer? How should I address somebody who is queer? And how do I not assume pronouns without offending somebody? Yeah, so pronouns are basically um, if you are a cisgendered heterosexual woman and you are comfortable uh, with your womanhood and you are comfortable being a woman, uh, which is the gender assigned at your birth, then your pronouns are she and her. So my gender assigned at birth was male, but I also love the fact that I have this female, wonderful female energy in me and I respect it and I celebrate it. But I also like my male energy. Yeah. So for me, I go with the pronouns he and she. And if you're uncomfortable or you're confused on a particular day, then just say they and them. So it's all in your hands and I think that we have to be a little more empathetic and compassionate to other people and ask them, what are you comfortable being called? Some people might just turn around and say it's none of your business, 
but <laughs> but at least you've done your job of you know asking you've done your job of asking if somebody wants to answer it they will answer it if they don't want to answer it you get your hint don't talk to them exactly exactly no i think that that covers a lot of you know that question um i guess but a lot of people's questions many people sent in messages mentioning that they are struggling to know what their own sexuality is and they are concerned because they are 18 19 and they still don't know um so i guess to you how did you know or how would you encourage somebody to explore their sexuality and what does it mean to come out i was not like the other heterosexual boys and i was very 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 flamboyant i was very good at sports i was a sports captain of my school i'm a national level swimmer and um i was in you know in the performing arts i used to sing i used to dance i used to you know um do debates and elocution and all of that so i knew for a fact that these are things that um may not be you know uh, may not fall in the structure of what a boy should do boy should not sing in a girl's voice boy should not wear makeup boy should all of these things were you know we used to hear about this from sources which I didn't didn't know whether I should believe because when I went back home my parents were rock stars they didn't give a damn you know they were like do whatever you want just make sure you're safe and make sure that you know you don't harm anybody else that's all respect to get respect that's what I was taught at home and I would like to tell the 18 19 year olds who are uh, as you said curious uh, and and they're not sure about themselves don't worry you're not alone we all gone through that all of us if you feel the necessity to do so please make it a point to ask for help if they want to ask for help where would you suggest they go so um you can always write in to me and uh you know i'll give avanti my uh gmail uh you know my email and you can write to me i have an entire team that goes through my emails and if it's like an sos you know we respond as soon as we get it so all of that is in place and uh if you can't get to me for for some very 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 absurd reason if it's an sos email and if i don't reply to you in 2 days that means i'm dead so that's how how seriously i take uh people that follow my journey and and, and believe that i can help them that's how serious i take it so there were a lot of folks who sent in questions which they did because they find this to be a safe space um and they're genuine questions a lot of folks ask the question for example genuine question i don't need to be offensive but how do people with different sexualities actually have sex and how could they have children there are ways and means let's just say you have to do what makes you happy yeah. okay now this is something very personal when you don't have to ask somebody how you have sex if you need information contact people that can give you that information in a confidential sort of a, an environment also kind of go to uh, sites that have that are uh, you know as i said uh, sources that are the verified sources go to verified sources read up read up about all of these things that it's it's a genuine question i'm not saying you should have this question but i mean it's uh, it's it might sound a little offensive to some people and that therefore i'm not addressing it directly someone's asking how do i get over the internalized shame that i feel because of society i am struggling with my own sexuality and i can't accept myself now this is uh, this is something that hits uh, very close to home for me because i had a lot of internalized shame as i told you for the longest time i had to be, i believe that i am supposed to be a certain way i'm supposed to be I'm a man. I'm a gay man, but I can't wear makeup. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't wear a dress. I shouldn't wear jewelry. I shouldn't paint my nails. There was so much shame that I brought on to myself because my internal saboteur was being literally ignited by fallacies that I was getting from the outside world. So I would just like to tell this person or whoever has asked this question is first of all. consult a counselor take a few sessions understand one thing that all of us are special in our own way we all have something to offer so you are important and don't let anybody tell you otherwise 
because they're lying. <laughs> no, I love that. I, I love the fierceness with which you end every statement. <laughs> it's a it's a muscle I've trained over the years. <laughs> So I know in your case, your parents were very supportive and accepting, but there's a lot of folks, especially teenagers, whose parents aren't as accepting. Um, besides resources that they might share, are there any things or steps that they can take? You know, the best part about uh, Avanti, the best part about being queer is you get to choose your own family. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of children, a lot of, um, uh, you know, people out there, individuals that don't get the love from their family have the, have the freedom of choosing their queer families. I'm just saying that understand that you have the tenacity, you are born with the power to fight your own battles, to face every situation. You have the power to do it. So don't under, undermine and underestimate yourself. That's all I want to say. Thank you. And I guess our last question to end this is, how can somebody be a good ally? If you had to be a good ally to me, I would like you to uh, tell me every two minutes that I am fantastic, fabulous. I look swell. <laughs> <laughs> that my makeup's in place, girl. My hair is a million bucks. I am opulence in all its finery. Now, then you're an ally to me. <laughs> but if you have to just generally be an ally, just uh, in one sentence is um, just be more human. Be more empathetic and compassionate. Understand that your struggles are yours, but your struggles are not benchmarks to compare with other people's struggles. So when you're very secure about yourself, your gender, your orientation, your life, you automatically become very accommodating to other people's uh, you know personalities and being and that's when you're the best ally I love that thank you so 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 much for doing this it really means a lot to me and to our community and to everybody um, any parting words that Sushant Tindikar slash Rahini Konyal would like to say well I would just like to say um, please keep supporting queer people not just for one month for the Pride Month. Uh, you know, there are marginalized communities, not just the LGBTQI plus community, but even within the community, there are people that, uh, you know, um, are differentiated based on caste, uh, based on color, based on um, body type, based on, you know, a lot of, see, that's what I'm saying. There are so many intersectionalities. So just make sure that, you know, be you, do you, but just make sure that you're not um, being condescending about another person, another community. Just just live and let live, love and let love. That's all I have to say. I love that. <laughs> and with that, signing out. <laughs> no, thank you so, so much. And I will include for everybody watching um, Sushant's email and some of the other resources that they mentioned in the description below. So thank you so much. I just wanna say, I just wanna say thank you